So next we're going to hear from our public safety uh, contingency, I guess I would put it. So um, with regard to the ALEC program and from EMS, um, BPS is here to, I'm sorry, Boston uh, Police Department, BPD, is here to also talk about the North Star program. So I'll let you guys go in whatever order you want to go in, and um, thank you for coming. Okay, good evening, everybody. My name is Bill Canada. I'm from the Autism Law Enforcement Education Coalition based out in Westwood. Uh, we're a project that began in 2003 to teach first responders, police, fire departments, EMTs, paramedics, and also hospital uh, emergency rooms and nursing about individuals with autism and developmental disabilities. Okay, and, and our goal is, our goal back in 2003 was to train every first responder in the state, and we've been doing it for nine years. And we're, we're getting there slowly, long way to go, but we're, we're gonna do it. Uh, we've been very active in the city of Boston since 2006. Okay, and I'm going to discuss where we've been and what trainings we've been doing. Uh, what we're going to talk about tonight uh, is a collaboration to connect these agencies with the community through a program we call Community Days. Okay, we're working with uh, EMS, uh, uh, Beth Remus, who's uh, a member of the ALEC team, uh, who's been doing training since 2006 for ALEC and she's also a parent of a child with ASD. Uh, Boston Police Department, we have Michelle Maffeo, again a parent, child with ASD, and she's going to tell you uh, a little about what they're doing at the Police Department and also the North Star Program. Uh, Lieutenant Pop from the Fire Department, uh, he's been instrumental in getting all of the Boston Fire Department trained. We finished training in October. We also trained the recruits and uh, we're going to have uh, continuing training with that agency uh, for a long time, we hope. Okay. Uh, this was all brought together by uh, Councilor Rob Consalvo and uh, what he saw, what we were doing, and he really wanted to expand what we were doing in the city. So this is why we're here tonight to tell you uh, what we're up to with uh, connecting all of the neighborhoods with these emergency services. Okay, uh, our program, as I said, began in 2003 uh, out in uh, South Norfolk Arc. And uh, what happened was we had many concerned parents of children with autism and developmental disabilities about having contact their children or their adults with emergency services and the emergency services not knowing about these children or adults. Okay, and we had reps from uh, the city and a lot of the surrounding towns who were very interested in developing this program. We worked with District Attorney Bill Keating, now Congressman, and uh, received funding from the state to go forward and train all of these different agencies around the state. And we've been to most cities and towns in the state with this training at some level. Okay, the ALEC training helps foster a deeper understanding of ASD among public safety and law enforcement personnel. Okay? Because you, you think about it, we, we know our children, we know how to handle them. During an emergency, what if something happens to us as a parent or a care provider? Okay? Is this first responder going to know what to do with this child or with this adult or have an understanding of how they may react? because they will react differently. It can be a very challenging call for somebody who doesn't know our children. And I should step back and say, I'm a, I'm a dad too of a son with autism who's uh, 21 years old. So he taught me everything I need to convey to other first responders. Okay. Um, our trainers are also parents of children on the spectrum or with a developmental disability. So they have an understanding about what to tell their first reformers. They're actually sharing their own personal experiences. Okay? And that we feel that's very important because if you're a firefighter, you'll train firefighters. If you're a police officer, you'll train the police officers because we know our jobs and we're actually talking to our peers. 
and we understand that the work that they do. Okay, so say we're working with Boston Fire Department. We trained uh, just about a thousand firefighters last fall about people with autism and developmental disabilities. Okay, and they want to be very involved uh, working with Lieutenant Pop uh, with our new program coming up the community days. We've secured locations we're going to talk about in the city and we're going to tell you how we're going to have you interact with the firefighters uh, at those locations. The police department, or excuse me, I mean back up to EMS, um, Beth Remus with EMS, she's also an ALEC trainer, she's been doing the uh, uh, trainings here in the city since 2006. Beth, um, how many members you've trained all of Boston EMS, correct? That's about a 300 member department. About 300 members of EMS and you have continuing education training with them just about every year. So they're constantly training about people with disabilities, which is fantastic. Okay, uh, police department, a little different style training. Michelle, um, you, you launched an online program, what was that, last um, October? Last October, yep. Last October, and how many police, uh, every, every it was police mandatory for, for all the officers to complete it. Okay, a mandatory training for all Boston police officers to have this online training. Okay, uh, Michelle has also, um, been working with the recruits doing a live presentation for every rec recruit class that comes in for training. So they're getting a live presentation and she shares her experiences uh, with her son. Okay, and um, again, as I said, the fire department and the recruit training. Uh, the recruits have been trained in the last class. We hope to continue this and do updated continuing education with them throughout the years. So you can see we've been very active. Most of the first responders in the city have had some training from us, which is, which is fantastic. We've already had some great results from the training, uh, a better understanding. They arrive on the scene. They, we show them videos, lots of videos. So when they get to the scene, it's not foreign to them. They know how to handle our guys. They know how to rescue them. They know how to keep them safe on the police side. Is it suspicious activity, or are they acting this way because they're autism or their developmental disabilities? So, and that, it's very important because, especially on the police side, they have very little time to think of what they're going to do. So, we want to show them as much as we can to keep our kids and adults safe. Okay, the community days. Uh, you want to touch on that a little, Bets? It, it's up to you. Okay. So, actually, you could just talk about the beginning of the community day and the involvement of it. Sure. Okay, and our sponsor for the community days is uh, Doug Flutie Jr. Foundation. Correct. Uh, one of the projects of the ALEC program, and one that's very important to me personally, is the community day component. What we do is we go out to fire stations primarily. And we hold open houses for families who have a loved one diagnosed with autism or another related developmental disability. These are private open houses, so they're not the huge community open houses that may be overwhelming sometimes for, for your family members who are diagnosed on the spectrum. We have police representation, EMS um, present, and what we do is we open up the firehouse and we open up all the equipment and we encourage families to come out and meet your own local first responders. It's really, really important that you know who the people are going to be who are coming out to your house in the event of an emergency. And it's more important that they know who you are. Um, we promote um, disclosure to your local first response agencies. Let them know who you are. Let them know about your child who's diagnosed on the spectrum. Let them know what special needs that they may have. The more encounters or more, the more that they meet your child, the better the chance that it's gonna be a successful intervention if there is an emergency situation. So what we do at the community days is we encourage families to come meet their first responders. We have a variety of paperwork that um, we want you to bring home and have them bring back to school. We have uh, picture exchange communication system cards, PEX cards that we give to, at all the trainings that we host to the first responders and we tell you go home and, and show these PEX to your kids. So if there is a crisis situation, they've had exposure to them. We talk about bioforms. I don't know if you want to 
go into that? Yeah, actually we'll talk about that because okay. it's an ongoing project in the city. All right, we, um, we'll touch on that a little bit. We have bioforms that we send you home with to fill out yeah. and it's about your child's and essential information that would be pertinent in the event of an emergency. So we send you home with homework. But it really, it's a great way to expose your child to the equipment and the people who are going to be helping you in an emergency before there's an emergency. If your child's gone onto the ambulance and had a really good time playing with the local EMS or other kids who are on the ambulance, there's an emergency, they're gonna be probably more apt to go onto that ambulance and not be quite as scared. So it's really about exposure to the first responders, exposure to the equipment, exposure to the whole everything. It's, ex it's exposure. I apologize, but um, I'll let Bill go a little bit further into into uh, the logistics of the bioforms and what the city of Boston is. It's incredible. Um, city Councilor Rob Pinsavo is really spearheading this issue with Boston Fire, Police, and, and EMS, and trying to keep your kids safe. So I'll let Bill go into that a little bit further. Okay. Yeah. While we're on that, with the uh, biographical information form she's talking about. Uh, it's a program the city is exploring at this time. We're trying to work it out with how to disclose your information. Basically, what we would do is you would give us information about uh, your loved one in your house. It would go through the emergency dispatch center, and they would have that information on file, and they would give it to the responding units to let them know there is a person with a disability in that household. Um, Charlie, have we heard any updates on that at all? or? Okay, yeah, and, and we're due to have another meeting with the uh, counselor about it, but uh, it's been received, uh, well received uh, through the city council. Uh, all were unanimous about exploring how they're going to do this. Basically, it's computer technology. They have to make it so it can work with the existing system, and they're changing the systems in the city. So hopefully it's a, a project we're going to see in the near future. Okay, just some uh, pictures of the community days. Basically, if you remember when you were little, we went to the firehouse to visit. Well, this is a day where we're going to have all of the agencies in the firehouse. So you get to see them, you get to see their equipment, what they're about, and they get to meet your children and adults with a disability. So we have a better understanding of each other when an emergency happens. We've had great success with this around the country show a few more pictures of it here and a lot of these guys when they come in they're a little nervous in the beginning and usually at the end this is what we get is smiles and they're happy to go in and see the firefighters police officers and the EMTs and see what they're about and, and a lot of our guys once once they have been there a while they want to start to explore we let them touch everything because it, you think of a fire situation Firefighter shows up in all that gear and his mask on, that's going to scare a lot of our guys. Okay? So this is a place we get to show them how we dress up. They can touch everything and they can see it's a safe environment. So hopefully during an emergency, they'll remember this time at the community day and they'll be okay with it. They're not going to be afraid. That's the goal of it. And as you can see here, more pictures of just the different equipment that we use. Okay? Smiles and happy. And we've done these uh, in several areas of the country, uh, most of them in the, in the metro area here, but we've been to Los Angeles, Alabama, Florida, all different places, and it's been a tremendous success in uh, every, every one that we've done. We've got a freeze up here. Just a couple more pictures there. Okay, our community days, uh, our kickoff, we're going to do them in the nine congressional districts of the city. Uh, and we've uh, picked locations. We have some information tonight that we'll be able to uh, hand it out to the, uh, to the committee here. And we're hoping to get the information out through to the different schools in each district. Uh, Roslindales is going to be March 23rd from 10 to 12. And in Dorchester, it'll be April 6th from 10 to 12 also. And uh, the location is going to be in Rosendale, Engine 53, uh, 945 Canterbury Street. Can I just interject one thing? Sure. Um, what makes the community days 
successful events is that you're going to your own local fire station. Um, so we have flyers for our two, these are essentially our pilot open houses or community days within the city limits. So we have flyers if you live in Roslindale and the Rosland, what, I don't know what congressional district number Rob Consalvo is. I don't have that one. Okay, well, Rob yeah. Consalvo is your city councilor. We have a flyer for you right here. Make sure you take it home. And then Dorchester is where we're going to be hosting our second one in April. So I'll leave these. They're really going to be relevant if you live in these areas. Um, otherwise, stay tuned. We will be planning with Boston Police, Fire, and EMS the additional community days. Probably we'll take the summer off. Summers can be busy. And then we'll kick it up back in the fall. And we can give you um, an email for these. Great. Thank you. Because of our funding, we, we are going to all the different districts in the city. We're doing our initial nine, and then hopefully we can receive additional funds to continue the program and have it ongoing every year. Okay, um, Michelle, you had a little bit about North Star. Would you like to speak a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, my name is Officer Michelle Maffeo. Um, I currently run uh, the North Star Personal Alert Program. So I'm standing right here. Standing right here. Uh, so North Star is a free and voluntary program uh, for a City of Boston residents that may have a loved one with autism, uh, cognitive development disability, as well as um, Alzheimer's and dementia. And the program is geared uh, to this population because we ask information about um, if there's communication difficulties, if there's wandering issues, if there's uh, basically a lack of safety skills uh, for, for your loved one. So you volunteer, um, you know, all this information from, you know, regular address, you know, description and all that good stuff. But then we get into a little more about are they verbal? How do they communicate? Um, if they've run, where did they run in the past? If, you know, if there has been police involvement and we've had to do a report on where they've wandered, we're going to hook that right up to the snapshot of that person. We ask for atypical behaviors. What might cause, you know, uh, the attention, you know, of that person? We ask, what else do we ask? Their sense of danger. What are calming mechanisms? What can we do? If we have to approach and go in to assist your loved one, what can we do um, and say, to calm them down. And if we have a heads up of, you know, just even sensory issues, you know, we want to de-escalate, we don't want to escalate. So we just keep all this information and, you know, we have it in store and if you have to call 911 for any reason, uh, you'd first and foremost, of course, you'd state your emergency, but also that your loved one is in North Star. And then we have that snapshot. We keep a very, um, we do um, digital photographs. We update them on a yearly basis. Uh, we update all information on a yearly basis unless it's needed to um, be updated sooner than that. And we basically, the, the information just sits there. It's not used, it's not, you know, given out, um, but we want to have it if we need it. You know, we want to be able to help our more vulnerable community members. We also do, um, we take a photo, we take that photo as well as just a basic information of, of the child and we bring it to the districts. We want the district offices to know this is, you know, you know John lives on your district, this is what's going on, and you know, if they see John out and about, is he okay to be out by himself? You know, so we just want the officers to know who's in their area. So, and then we have a spot for any additional um, information that you know you feel that we should know as first responders. And the information is, is shared with Fire and EMS, um, hopefully sooner than later, if it's needed to be. You know, of course, um, you sign a release that we're going to share the information for the welfare of your loved one. So you would, um, I have um, brochures here. Uh, you can call and we can, um, we can set up a time. I've done it where we've gone to schools and we've you know, done multiple people or we could just do um, an individual. We can go to the home, we can go to the school, whatever's most convenient for you. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. I don't know if anybody has any questions. And no, okay. Okay, it just, well, <laughs> oh. you're, I mean, it's just so important that these responders have this information ahead of time. If you've registered and they can, the dispatch can convey it to the responding units so we'll have that understanding before we arrive. We can kind of start planning our approach to that situation with that valuable information instead of trying to figure it out once we arrive on the scene. 
So it is, it is very important to do so. Okay, we'll take some questions. We got a couple back then. I bet they're for you. Oh, okay. They all like you. <laughs> Can you do a CD about the community? Like a video, so that we can expand exposure to people. That sure, we, yeah, we could, we could do that. We could film that and uh, have it available. It we'll ha we'd have to figure out the best way that we could get it out to uh, others in the city, uh, either through your website, we yeah, could you put can, a link. Yeah. 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 YouTube yeah. channel, you can use ours. YouTube channel, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, that is something we could do. And, uh, it would be a great idea. Go ahead. We're also working with Hill um, and their Autism Support Center and we've asked them to send the notice out to other families in their database, as well as reach out to community centers, et cetera. So we're really gonna try to go through the city councilor's offices and make them push, you know, push the notice about these events and really try and get people there. So spread the word, if you need to hear about it, come and see your, your district, um, let people know about it. And it's something we could post on your website too, also about the events and uh, and what districts they're going to be in. Okay, fantastic. That's what we need. We need to. We have the program. We need to get the word out and get as many people in as possible. Okay. Any other questions? I'll go right here. Then I'll go up there. Go ahead. Hi. Um, I just kind of wanted to see if I could put a bug in your ear. I think this is such an amazing program. Um, it's so needed, and it's really, really awesome that you know. It's going across the entire country mm -hmm. to all first responders. But the bug I wanted to put in your ear is, um, in light of the recent happenings with Sandy Hook, um, it's causing for, for schools with kids with special education programs um, to have lockdown drills. And as a special education teacher, <coughs> I'm really concerned about it because um, even though special education staff is well trained to handle kids with difficulties and differences. Um, the regular education staff is not. And I'm wondering if your program could spill over to train teachers as first responders during lockdown drills. Um, so that these drills can be done in a way, you know, I work in an inclusive school system, so uh, my students could be anywhere with any teacher, um, not necessarily a special ed staff. Um, so if we had a lockdown drill, if all teachers were trained um, in being a first responder, so to speak, they would know how to carry out the lockdown drill without undue stress and anxiety and trauma to our students. Yes, and um, since that has happened, it's, it's been a hot topic of conversation and what to do. And the situations you're talking about, mm -hmm. yes, we do need to train everybody. We have to develop curriculum and also um, we're, we're going to search for funding to expand a program like that. Because the lockdown is not, it's involved with all, mostly with the police agencies, usually the uh, school resource officer, and we need to um, uh, develop curriculum to do so. But it is, it's new to us, and it is on our radar to develop a, a program to move forward, because there are many issues that go along with that. Uh, and a lot of our guys, uh, the lockdown is going to mean nothing to them, okay? So it's going to be very difficult to keep uh, a child with special needs quiet and still. I know my guy's not going to do it. I'm going to have to sit on him to keep him still. Still can't keep him quiet. So, but again, yes, uh, that is something we need to explore and uh, move on with that in the future. So, great point. Can we have one back here? Yes, I just have one question. Um, I think there's a different I'm sorry, ma'am. She lives somewhere she else. She moved one district to another. I'm in Boston now, but I just moved back to Boston. I was at the time of the Northwest. He was in for the Oh, yeah, no, no. This is completely separate. Totally um, separate. Yeah. Yeah, each city and town is, is individual. Okay. Yeah, it's not a state system. Okay, so you need to see her. Okay, anything else? Anybody else? Okay, I think we're good.
Thank you very much. If you have any further questions, we do have some brochures up here you can look at. And uh, look for these community days through the website. Um, and uh, we're going to try and get the information out through the schools and also uh, through other agencies in the city that serve people with developmental disabilities. Thank you. Great. Thank you. I think that was really helpful information. I can tell you that um, in my previous life, I was a police officer as well. And when I was a police officer, there really wasn't this type of training available. And I know that when, you know, if someone came to my house, I have a, a daughter that has um, developmental disabilities and she's nonverbal. and God forbid there was something that had happened to me if they responded. I'm quite sure that they wouldn't know what to do um, with my daughter or how to help her and not make the situation worse if it wasn't for this type of training. So we really appreciate the fact that you guys are doing that and reaching out to the communities because I do think that when people are responding to a call and they know of an emergency, giving them information ahead of time of a situation that they should be aware of and that they may be required to react differently than they intend to react is important information to have and quite honestly it can avoid further tragedies because if people are not recognizing that somebody's having um, a meltdown or some type of an issue because of their disability and the way their disability impacts their behavior, they're going to interpret that as much different type of conduct and they're going to respond differently. So educating first responders on who our children are and where they are, I think, is a very important step to making sure that any, um, any interaction with those agencies is appropriate and helpful to all of our families. So, you know, as far as registering our kids or even getting them out there to um, visit these locations, I think that that's a wonderful idea because part of it has to do with our kids is they're more fearful of experiences that they haven't had. And, you know, you don't generally see the police or fire department unless or, or the ambulance unless there's a true emergency so having the opportunity to give them exposure to those things will definitely help to sort of desensitize them if you will to sort of it being um, a traumatic event so um, thank you very much for doing that I think it's a wonderful um, wonderful um, program and thank you for coming this evening so 